I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of your imagination. My story explores the dark, uncharted area of the human brain. Despite medical research, scientists admit that there is much that is still unknown about the flesh and blood computer which guides our conscious and unconscious lives. Let us listen as Colonel Edmund Plant of the CMI warns Dr. Gentry what dangers exist when we attempt to control this complicated human mechanism. Uh, Let me explain, Doctor. Your patient, Kent Hatcher here, may be a time bomb. We have no idea what was done to him. But we do know, from other cases, what to expect. You mean uh, brainwash? Perhaps. It's very likely Kent may have been subjected to deep and continual hypnosis. His mind washed as clean as a sheet of white paper, then programmed to commit some terrible act against his own people. Our mystery drama, Prognosis Negative was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars William Redfield and Bryna Rayburn. (laughs) Colonel Edmund Plant was on an unpleasant errand. As he walked into the big, dirty, gray building the military hospital for the insane known to the brass as the pit. He could think of many places he'd rather be. But this was a duty he had to perform, part of his job, and he wanted to get it over with as fast as possible. I hope this won't take too long, Dr. Gentry. No, no, not too long, Colonel Plant. All we need is your official identification. We've been able to identify him from his fingerprints, but the official rules call for your observation and signature. I know, I know. Uh, Right this way, we've got him in a private room because of his condition. Here we are. Step inside, please. I'll, uh, I'll speak to him. I don't know if he'll respond. Kent, can you hear me? Uh, 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 Colonel Plant, your commanding officer, is here to see you. You want to talk to him? Six, five, three, listen to me. Listen to me. What does that mean? Well, we don't know. That's the only response we've been able to get from him. Uh, Kent, do you remember me? Kent. See? Look at his eyes. No focus. He doesn't hear you. He's in a world of his own. Mm. Kent Hatcher disappeared on a mission behind enemy lines eight years ago. Ah. Two months ago, he showed up in a prisoner exchange. We had believed him dead in action. After seven years, he was declared officially dead. Well, does he have any relatives? Uh, a wife? Yeah, he had a wife. She's remarried. Moved away. Left the state, I believe. Anyone else, Colonel? No. So, here he is. Mindless, mutilated, tortured. No relatives, no friends. And his superiors embarrassed or annoyed that he's still alive. Now, I did not make the rules, nor did I persuade Kent Hatcher to take the mission. It was purely voluntary. I know, I know. Well, what do we do now? Of course, we will do our best to bring him back. Mentally and physically? Both, if possible, but it is doubtful. He has an overstrained heart condition. It's quite serious. So permanent physical recovery is doubtful. Perhaps it's all for the good. But you would rather that he die? Uh, Let me explain. Kent Hatcher may be a time bomb. We have no idea what was done to him. But we do know from other cases what to expect. You mean uh, brainwash? Perhaps. It's very likely Kent may have been subjected to deep and continual hypnosis. His mind washed as clean as a sheet of white paper. And then programmed to commit some terrible act against his own people. Six, five, three. Listen to me. Listen to me. Doctor, I want this man kept under surveillance day and night. We cannot take any chances. Sam, I, Colonel Plant here. Oh, Colonel, this is Dr. Gentry. Paul Gentry. Uh, yes? Remember, we were talking just last week about the case of Kent Hatcher, one of your agents? Oh, 
Oh, where's that? Well, yes, yes. I'm afraid I'm going to puncture that theory of yours about Hatcher being something of a time bomb ready to blow up. I'm I'm certain that he's not dangerous. On what do you base your findings? Well, he's been under intense treatment and has begun to respond very rapidly. He's, he's mild and cooperative. He's almost childlike. I see. I've reduced the guard to one eight-hour shift, midnight to eight in the morning, and at all other times he is constantly in the hands of our nurses and therapists and other personnel. Well, you are something of a gambler, Doctor. Uh, uh, a gambler? Taking that kind of a risk. No, 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 no. I, I don't think so. Uh, doctor, has it occurred to you that this entire mild convalescence may have been programmed into the mind of this man to throw you off guard? Oh, nonsense. I know a harmless man when I see one. To leave him unguarded is taking chances with the lives of many people. Heaven only knows what has been fed into his receptive and willing mind. You know your name is Kent, don't you? Yes, Doctor. Do you know your full name? Can you remember? Yes. Kent Hatcher. Very good, very good. Now, how do you know that is your name? You told me. You had a life before you were brought here. You were married. Can you remember that? No, Doc. You had a daughter, Mary. She was very ill. I don't remember. You loved her very much. When she died, you were heartbroken. Heartbroken? You don't recall anything? No. Oh, Doctor remind you, you have a lecture today at the university. Oh, yes, 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 that's right. Thank you, Evelyn. Look, I'm uh, working with Hatcher. You know the case? I should know it. I've been transcribing all your notes. Well, I'm in the midst of giving him a series of perception tests, all very simple, just a matter of timing them. Yes, I know them, Doctor. You think you could finish them while I'm at the university? Uh, well, yes, I, I guess I could, but... I... What? I'm just a bit afraid of him. I was in the office the last time you spoke with Colonel Plant. Uh, now, now, look, if you don't want the assignment, I'll, I'll oh, no, just no, give... No, 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 I, I want it. As, as long as you say he's... Well, okay. Good, good. I'll expect you in ten minutes. Excellent, Mr. Hatcher. Excellent. Well, I'll, I'll have a good report for Dr. Gentry. Now, suppose we put all the equipment, the puzzles and the cards... Back into their proper boxes. Proper boxes? The boxes they came in. You understand, don't you? I understand. I think you understand more than you pretend. Are you pretending? No. 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 Oh, don't get upset. I'm no. sorry if I hurt your feelings. Six, five, three. Listen to me. Listen to me. Please, Six, uh, sit down. Five, we have more three. to do, more Listen games to play. To Please. Now. Now. No, stay, stay now. Back. Stay back. Now. Please. Now. Now. Let me. Now. Please. Now. Six, five, three. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm grateful to the officials who have given me this airtime to explain a very serious matter. I am or was Ken Hatcher's doctor, and I must add my warning to the hundreds of others you have read in your newspapers and heard over the air. Ken Hatcher is dangerous, frighteningly dangerous. Do not under any circumstances attempt to apprehend him yourself. Call the special numbers that have been set up for this purpose. Do not let his mild manner deceive you. He is a killer who will act without even the slightest provocation. The police have orders to shoot on sight. Morning, mister. What can I do for you? You want to buy a $200 coat for you, 18? I want some clothes. D different clothes. Oh, well, I don't blame you. You're wearing... Old paint as overalls, and where did you pick up that raincoat? At the automat? Give me clothes. Sure. Sure, mister. Didn't mean to hurt your feelings or nothing. Uh, look, I figure you about a 40 long, right on this rack over here. So, uh, you just go ahead and help yourself, huh? You pick out what you want. I gotta go to the back of the store to, uh, 
do a little alteration, okay? You just pick out what you want, and then call me, right? Okay. I'll see you in a minute. What was that number I seen in the paper? Where is it? Where is it? Here. Here. Right in my store. I recognize him in a picture in the paper. Also, I've seen it four times on the news. I don't know how long I could get... Six, five, three. Listen to me. Listen to me. Now, the way I see it, Archie, the old girl's prime for the taking right now, with the right approach. <laughs> it's the booze talking, Freddy girl. You ain't got a cent out of you, Mrs. Mulberry. And you ain't gonna because you ain't sharp enough to convince her. Look, Archie, you gotta work these big jobs slow. You rush them, you end up with an empty hand. <laughs> Look, Freddy, that old tea leaves bit and the table knocking routine ain't gonna fool no one. Not even your stupid Mrs. Mulberry who wants to get in touch with the spirit of her dear dead departed. <laughs> Take the bottle and get in the other room. Might be a customer for a reason. This hour, 11.45? Yeah, it's probably some drunk. All the better. They give bigger fees and no complaints. Now get out. All right, all right. I'll be sitting behind the curtain. Yes? Yes? Step inside, friend, and let Frederica Gillis solve your problems. You have... Yes, yes. Oh, look, step inside, please. That's better. Now, what's troubling you, friend? Money matters, domestic difficulties, fear of the future. There is a sign in your window. Spiritual reader, forecaster of the future, palms red. No, mm. no, not not that. Not what? The sign, the, the sign, room to rent. Oh, that. Well, that's a mistake, mister. We had our room vacant, but we really don't have... I took that room three months ago. I'm the lodger here. There ain't no more room. But the sign is still in the window. It's just a mistake. It should have been taken down. No room... No room, chum. Uh, this way out. Wait. Uh, maybe we have got a room for this gentleman. What? Freddy, have you got... Go top floor. Sort of an attic room, if you don't mind the climb. What? Wait a minute. You can't get in that room. Now I've got all the photographic equipment in there. Well, you better clear it out, because I've just rented the room to this here nice gentleman. Uh, you want to take a look at it, sir? I'll take it. Without even looking at it? I think you'd better go up and then decide. I want to be fair about it. Uh, right up them stairs, top floor, first door on the left. Well, I, I don't need to look. Now do as you're told. Go upstairs. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll do as you say. What is the crazy idea of that? Now, what do you want him around here for? For a very definite reason. I recognized him immediately. You did? Well, who is he? He's Kent Hatcher. The man the entire country is searching for. That one? And you let him in? Oh, put down that phone, you fool. Put it down! Now, this guy, Hatcher, is going to be the one thing we need to pull off that caper with Mrs. Mowbray. This is the biggest piece of luck we've had. Frederica Gillis, in her own canny way, recognized more than just the features of the hunted man. She knew intuitively that he was susceptible to hypnosis and made up her mind to use this susceptibility to further her own nefarious plans. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Hatcher, the hunted man, found refuge with Frederica Gillis and her accomplice, Archie. She has not permitted him to leave the house, and in fact, has been working to disguise his much-publicized scarred face. That you, Archie? Right, Freddy girl. 
Come out here in the kitchen. I want you to see something. Come in. Well, Archie, how do you like him? Good. What a change you made in his appearance. You've even given him a new hairdo. <laughs> Looks a lot different with the dye job. Takes years off his age, blacking it up like that. Uh, wait till his beard grows out. That'll cover most of the scars. It's terrific. Well, Kent, how do you like your new look? I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Only his name is not Kent, Archie. That had to be changed. His name is Mazumoda. What? He's going to be Mazumoda, the Indian mystic. He'll darken his face, let his beard grow out, and then with a fancy, uh, uh, what do you call them, things they wrap around their heads? Turban. Turban, turban, that's it. Oh, can't you just see him in a rich-looking robe with a turban on his head? Now, wait, well, what's on your mind, Freddy girl? Oh, you're not very quick, Archie. Now, look, what I have in mind is... Mazumoda. Mazumoda. Do you hear me? I hear you. What is your name? Tell me your name. I am Mazumoda. Now... I want you to go to your room, and you are to stay there until I call you. Repeat what I have told you. Go to my room and stay until you call me. Now, go. I go to my room and stay. That's oh, amazing. It's amazing. He's behaving like a little lamb. Oh, I could sense right from the moment I laid eyes on him that he was an easy subject. Oh, we're going to give Mrs. Mowbray the greatest spirit show she's ever seen in her life. She'll hand us her money in a bushel basket. Everything ready, Archie? Yeah, I think so. Now, let's run over the list. Wind effect, whistling sound, eerie music. Okay, but not too much. When she does get in touch with her dear departed Kenneth, what's she going to ask him? And what's our phony medium Kent going to reply? Mazumoda. Remember that. Okay, Mazumoda. What's he going to say? Now, you can't guess what the old gal might ask when the seance starts. You know? Look, I've been working with him all week. If the going gets too rough for him and he can't give a good answer, I'll just break things up, stop the seance, say that the contact with the spirit world is broken. Okay. What time is she coming? Oh, I told her 8 o'clock. Well, now, just to get things straight, now, I'll be in the kitchen. All the sound effects will be piped into here where the seance is taking place, right? Right. Mm. And when I want the sound out, I'll say, Mazumodar, do you feel a presence in this room? Then I fade sound out and Mazumodar takes over. That's all there is to it. And Mrs. Mowbray will be here in 30 minutes. Mrs. Mowbray, this is the great Mazumoda. Oh, d does he does he speak English? Oh yes, I've asked him to conduct the séance in English. Oh. He's agreed, though he'd rather do it in his own language. Oh, I understand. Thank him for me. If he is able to reach out into the great void and bring my son, my dear son Kenneth, back to me, even for an instant. Mazumoda will do his best. I told him of your great sorrow and he was sympathetic. Weren't you all seeing one? I am sympathetic to the sorrows of a grieving mother. Oh, oh, bless you. Bless you. Please help me. Let us begin. Sit here at this table, Mrs. Mowbray. Yes. You there. I will sit opposite you. The great Mazumoda will sit between us. Let the seance begin. Uh, 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 what is this? What is this? Silence. Mazumoda must reach out into the spirit world. He is entering his trance. I... Call to you. I order you to come. Spirits, obey the command of Mazumoda. Do you 
feel a presence, all seeing one. There is one here who demands to speak. Then let him speak. Mother, mother, where are you? It's Kenneth. He's calling to me. You may speak to him. Oh, Kenneth, darling, I miss you terribly. Are, are you happy? I am happy, mother. Oh, oh, this is so alone, darling. I want you with me always. I, I, I have felt your presence near me. I have been with you from the moment of my death. It has been difficult reaching you. Difficult to let you hear my voice. Oh. Now you are being helped by kind and gentle people. Be good to them, Mother. Without them, our thin thread of contact will dissolve. Oh. I will return to you and we will talk again. I will return. Oh. What happened? Why has he gone? Oh, call him back. Call him back. I beg you. Mother Mota, I will give you anything you want, but please let me speak to him again. Now stop that. You want to ruin everything? Stop my saying. The seance is at an end. Oh, oh please. Please. Ask Mother Mota to forgive me for my outburst. Mother Mota understands, Mrs. Mowbray. Oh, I hope he does. When may I come again? I will call you after I consult with him. I... I want to... Well, I don't quite know how to say this, but can I give him something? I mean, will he accept? The all-seeing one is a holy man and may not accept money. It is unclean. Oh, oh well, in that case... But he must live, and I must live. Uh, that is, I will accept for him. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, here. You are a good person, Mrs. Gillis. I am I'm so lucky to have found you. Goodbye. Thank you again. And please, call me soon. Soon. Goodbye. Archie? She's gone finally, huh? <laughs> yeah, you didn't let the seance go too long, did you? Uh, just long enough to make her want more. Oh, it was a complete success. Mazumoto was perfect. She loosened up the purse strings a wee bit, too, didn't she? I heard her say something about money. Yeah. yeah. 500. Take your cut. 500? Oh, better than I thought. Peanuts. That's just a down payment on what she's going to give us. Beg us to take. You got something big on your mind? Well, the next time she's... Not going to be taken in quite so much by the atmosphere of the seance. She wants something more definite, more tangible. Well, we got all that info we collected from the Army files about her son. You know, flyer, shot down. <laughs> but he never recovered. Final report of his burial in enemy territory. Oh, nothing in that stuff will have any influence on her. I just take a look at this snapshot taken with his buddies overseas. Take a good look at it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, well, what's so important about this photo? Look at his right wrist. What do you see? Here, here, use this magnifying glass. Here. Uh, yeah. Looks like he's wearing one of them identity bracelets this guy's wore at the time. You know, especially flyers. That's correct. Now, it was specially made for him, she told me, by a fancy jeweler. Now, at the time of his death, it was destroyed or stolen. She never got it back. So what? <laughs> well, we are going to reproduce that bracelet. And at the next seance... Mazumodar will ask the dear departed Kenneth for some proof that he is really Mrs. Mowbray's son. <laughs> and then old Mazumi will drop the identity bracelet right into Mrs. Mowbray's sweating hands. Oh, oh, oh that's great. That's really a great idea, Federica girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, look, you take this photo and blow it up as large as you can. And then blow up the portion that takes in the right wrist. Uh, yeah, then blow that up again. Yeah, and get all the details. And huh? then we find a jeweler who can reproduce the identification bracelet exactly. Uh, what do you think that'll be worth to the rich Mrs. Mowbray? Hello, 
open up, Ken. Now, will you be a good guy? Good guy, now open up the door, huh? Look, I gotta get in there, Ken. Now, I got all my photographic equipment in there. Ah, well, thanks, old man. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm sorry if I disturb you. It will no. take me a minute. No. No. No, 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 wait, no. no. Wait a minute, Ken. Or, uh, no. No, whatever your name. Now, listen. No. Now, stop. Stop. Now, don't look at no. me like that. Federica! No! Federica, help! Six! No! Five! No! Three! Stop! Listen! No! To me! Stop! Federica! To me! Help! 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 Stay there until I order you to leave. Repeat what I have said. Go back to my room. Stay there. Until I order you to leave. Until you order me to leave. Feeling better, Archie? <clears throat> well, my throat feels... <coughs> Like a horse stepped out of something. <laughs> We're playing with dynamite. And the best thing we can do is turn him in before we all wake up dead somewhere. Huh? Yeah. Mm. Wait till we make the big caper to the next seance. And we're able to drop the identification bracelet into the center of the table. Yeah, can, can we take the chance? Can, can we wait that long? So just go to work. Take your pictures. How long will it take to have the bracelet made? Well, I know a guy who does great work. Good. Can you get to him? This is just a telephone call away. He owes me a couple of favors. Well, call him. <clears throat> and then start working with your camera. I got all your equipment out of Mazumodar's room. Here. <laughs> Feast your eyes on that. Oh, the bracelet. You got it. Told you the jeweler was your friend, huh? <laughs> Did it in two days. Now, ain't it beautiful? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> let me see the photo. The, the blow-up you made. Here. Spitting image. Oh, perfect. Looks like the original. Yeah. <laughs> Look how he made it look as though it had been in a fire, eh? Marbury went down in flames, you know. Yeah. Oh, good touch. Makes it look authentic. Look, I'll call Mrs. Marbury and set up the seance as soon as possible. Hey, uh, listen, there's one little fly in the ointment, Freddy girl. What? Maybe we ought to get a new medium to run the show, eh? What are you talking about, new medium? No, no. We've got to use Mazumoda. We've established him. Well, you got to unestablish him. He's gone. Gone? When? How? We'll just have to find him. Come on. He didn't have much money, so he couldn't have gone far. Well, wouldn't it be better to report the whole thing to the police? And throw away enough money to keep us in the good things for the rest of our life? Are you crazy? But now... No, no buts. Mazumoda is the key that will unlock Mrs. Mowbray's bank account. And we're not going to let that slip out of our hands. Kent Hatcher loose in the city again. No one to control his homicidal urges. His changed appearance would make it difficult for the police to recognize and to apprehend him. Will they? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. have gone by since Kent Hatcher broke through the bonds of hypnotic suggestion and fled from the house of Frederica Gillis. Mrs. Gillis and Archie have been hunting for him for hours. But the tortured man wanders through the big city. Something urges him onward. Something that he cannot define even to himself. Hello. May I speak to Carl Shearson, please? This is his wife. Carl, Alma, I know you don't like me calling the office, but I, I think I saw him. No, Carl, I'm sure he's changed, but I knew him. Yes, I, I know I said that before, but this time he followed me. Yes, I tried to get away. I ran into Fletcher's grocery store, quickly ordered some groceries and asked him to let me slip out the back entrance. I, di I didn't see him after that. 
Call the police. No, I couldn't. They... They'll kill him. They're searching for him and they'll take no chance. Oh, someone at the door. Must be my grocery order. I told them to send it up. Call me back in a few minutes, Carl. Coming. Oh, no. No. Please. Please. Don't come in here. Get your foot out of the door. Let me close it, please. Alma. I want to talk to you. Alma, don't hold the door. I I won't hurt you. Come. Come in. Alma, I've been following you. At first, I didn't know why. And, and then the name Alma, Alma kept repeating in my head. And then I knew who Alma was. Do you know who I am? Yes. I know you can't. They told me you were dead. I was alone all those years. I... I'm remarried. Remarried? You were declared legally dead. Even then I hesitated, but Carl insisted that we marry. He's a good man. Kind. I need him. He loves me. Our daughter Mary... Dead, isn't she? Pneumonia. The year after you disappeared. Dead. Everything. Dead. Or gone. Or over. Can't. You, you must go away. Hide. They're, they're looking for you. They may find you here. All over. You know, Alma, I can hardly remember what you used to look like. I can hardly remember my life. There's nothing here in the papers. Nothing on the radio or TV. All it says is fugitive killer still at large. Seems he ran into his ex-missus and her new husband reported it to the police. Well, that means he's still in town. Yeah, worse luck. I wish he'd take off with the great open spaces. I hope we never see him again. What are you talking about, Archie? We need him. I'm hoping he'll come back here. Here? Yeah, where else can he go? He hasn't a cent. He knows he's safe here. Question is, Freddy, are we? I can control him. And we need him. I stalled Mrs. Mowbray twice. I can't keep doing it without her losing interest. If he walked in that door today, we could schedule the seance for tonight and it... <gasps> Clear out of here, Archie. That's a client wants a reading. I'll go in the kitchen. All right, right, right. Call me if you want. Yeah. You, Mazumoto. Oh, come in, come in. Archie, come here. What? Why, it's him. But you was right. He did come back. Mazumoda, listen to me. Listen. You are to go to your room. Go to my room. You will change your street clothes to Mazumoda's robe and turban. Do you understand? I understand. Now, go to your room. Go. I go to my room. <sighs> it's amazing. That's truly amazing. You got him like a monkey on a string. I told you I could control him. You gonna pull it off tonight? Why should we wait? As soon as we get our money, we'll get rid of him and turn him in. Well, it's my sentiments exactly. Now, he is too hot to handle. The sooner the cops get him, the better. Yeah, hand me the phone. Mowbray, right on time. Come in. Come in. Thank you for calling me. I began to think that all contact with my son Kenneth was broken. I, 
I thought perhaps I had disturbed Mother Moda by my outburst. Oh, no, no. Nothing like that. But I must tell you, his efforts on your behalf have taken their toll of his strength. I don't quite understand. Well, every night, Mother Moda has reached out into the darkness of death to touch the spirit of your son. Oh, has he, has he really... The effort has drained his strength. He, he is not well... Oh, then perhaps it may take him months, perhaps years to recuperate. And the expenses incurred are very high. I will pay them anything. Well, I am certain that he will be successful tonight. I have been in communion with the spirit of your son. I have informed him that he must appear to you and must give you some evidence known only to the two of you to prove without any doubt that it is truly he. Oh, if he could, if he could. We will begin. Sit here at this table, as we did the last time. Yes. You there, I across from you. And Mazumoda sitting between us. Yes. Now I will dim the lights. Let us join hands and complete the mystic circle. <laughs> oh, Mazumoda, do you feel a presence? I feel there is one here who has. Traveled a long way. Do you know uh, him by name? This is not simple. Uh, he is trying. He is trying. Trying to. Matamoda, uh, are you all right? Can you continue? I can continue. I must. The spirit is. Here in our midst, he wants to speak. Let him speak. Mother! Mother! I call out to you across the long reaches of infinity. Oh, oh, Kenneth! I have spoken several times to this holy man who has made it possible to be near you. Yes, yes, Kenneth. He has in informed me that I must give you substantial proof of my presence here. What should it be? Oh, anything. Anything. I believe it is really you. No, I will give you proof. Proof of my love for you, dear mother. Do you remember your loving gift to me? What what gift? Shortly before I left to go overseas on my last furlough home. Oh, 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 the bracelet. The identification bracelet. Yes. It was, it was never found. Never returned to me. I wanted that more than anything else. I knew that and I return it to you now. Oh, oh, oh. Let us turn on the light. The seance <laughs> is over. <laughs> oh, 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 my dear son. Oh, could you all... Oh, been to me to bring back this bracelet. Oh, this is all I have left of him. Oh, thank you, Mother Moda. How can I ever... Adequately, thank you. I am sympathetic uh, to the grief of a lonely mother. <laughs> mother Bodai, he's fallen. Quick, help me. Help me lift him. Oh, I, 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 Archie! Archie! Come in here quickly! Oh, what is it? Oh, what happened? Mother Bodai has fainted. Collapse here. Help me. Yeah, help. Here, here, here. I'll get him under the right arm, nice. Oh, yes. And then you get him. Hey. Oh. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hmm? Oh. There's no use. Just leave him there. Leave him? He's dead. Oh. Oh. Come in. Oh, yes. 
Yes, yes, Colonel Plant. I've, uh, I've been expecting you. Yes, yes. The official identification of the body, I know. Well, I don't make the rules. I realize that, Doctor. Let's get on with it. I have another appointment. Very well. If you'll come this way. Get after you, Colonel. We, uh, keep the bodies here prior to identification. Mm, of course. Right this way, please. And here we are, number 31416. Do you identify this man, Colonel Plant? I do. His name was Kent Hatcher. His serial number... No, no, that won't be necessary, Colonel. It's all here on this form. May I have your signature, please? Uh, yes, of course. Mm-hmm. There you are. Thank you. Is that all? No, that's all that's required officially, Colonel. But do you mind if I ask you a question? Yes, go ahead. That business with the identification bracelet? Oh, it was a fake. A reproduction. Mrs. Gillis' accomplice Archie had it made from a photograph. We got all that in their confessions. They had made it look as though the dead son, Kenneth, had sent the bracelet to his mother from the great beyond? Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a common trick played by people of this type to milk naive women. Mm-hmm. However, there was one aspect of the matter that has not been satisfactorily explained. You mean about the inscription on the inside of the identification band? To my son, forever and ever, mother. Mm. Doctor, there was no way they could have known what that was or whether there was even an inscription. In some mysterious way, that engraving appeared on the inner face of the silver bracelet. How? We shall never know. the tortured, troubled man finally found his rest on a cold slab in the morgue. Unmourned, unwanted, unwept for. I'll be back shortly. at the terrifying results of tampering with the human brain. All the experts agreed pretty much on the methods that had been used, but not one had an answer for Kent Hatcher's mysterious extrasensory knowledge of the inscription on the inside of the bracelet. That he took to his grave. Our cast included William Redfield, Bryna Rayburn, Mason Adams, Earl Hammond, and Martha Greenhouse. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You see this writing? Yes. It is the runic alphabet. It represents an ancient death curse. And uh, and those uh, figures on it? The date of your death. Oh, that's ridiculous. It has earned the reputation of being one of the most powerful of all the ancient spells. The drawback, of course, was the absolute necessity of having the man or woman casting the runes to pass the curse on directly and have it accepted. Oh, no, I won't believe that. This is the 20th century. Careful, careful. Lose this paper and you lose your only chance. You mean there's something I can do? One thing. What is it? Pass the curse to someone else. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> 